Well, hello everybody. My name is Doug Rucker with PressureCleaningSchool.com. My passion is helping you new guys that are just getting started in the pressure washing industry to help you master this industry and help you to grow your business. Coming up, I've got some tips on using portable pressure washers, a great way to get your business started. So stay tuned for tips coming up next. Okay guys, this is one of the uh, portable pressure washers that we use for our company Clean and Green Solutions. This is a five and a half gallon per minute, uh, 3000 PSI. It's one of the Mad Max series. I think you've probably seen videos that I've done using the nine gallon per minute uh, Mad Max. These Mad Max are just awesome machines. I'm very impressed with them um, and just love the performance of them. But this is a portable machine that we use for certain jobs, uh, mainly commercial, sometimes large residential homes um, where we need a portable unit to get to certain areas. Um, we've used this quite a bit on hotels, um, apartment complexes, churches that have like an interior courtyard where uh, we can't necessarily go through a building where there are hoses or I don't want to go through a building um, with hoses. So that's what we use it for but it's a five and a half gallon 3000 psi unit um, this unit on doug rucker store runs about 15 i think about 1600 dollars, 1575 that's without the hose reel and the 100 foot of hose and also the electric uh key start no i'm sorry yes that's without that um, i think by the time you add the add-ons the hose and the hose reel and the electric start you get right around 2100 dollars, something like that but great little unit, love it. Um, it also comes in a skid, so you could get this in a skid unit and not have it portable. Um, great unit to, for starting out with. We also have four gallon per minute uh, units as well, and those are great for starting your business out as well. So just wanted to kind of run through the machine a little bit and let you know what it's about, five and a half gallon per minute, um, 3,000 PSI, and it's got an AR uh, pump on it and uh, it just performs and works great okay guys so one of the things I want to talk to you about is this is a five gallon per minute machine that I was talking about um, just a second ago and you also have the option of four gallon per minute machines four gallon per minute is going to be ideal for residential because you can hook up your uh, water source directly to this uh, machine if it's a four gallon per minute the five gallon per minute machines we're able to hook up directly onto our water source um, as long as we've got excellent water flow in most commercial properties 98 percent of them i'd say we've never had a problem hooking this five and a half gallon per minute machine up some residential we've been able to do that too but again this is mainly used for uh, commercial properties and so that's one of the things you have to decide about if you go with a five and a half gallon per minute machine, you're probably going to need a buffer tank to feed the machine, to gravity feed it, so that you don't starve the pump. But if you're starting out and you start with a four gallon per minute, you should be able to hook that to up to pretty much any water source um, on a residential property. Again, you just have to always check it and make sure that you've got good water flow. Um, and especially on houses that are serviced by a well, you need to make sure um, that you're gonna get continuous feed of water without the pump shutting off. Um, so just always check your water flow and even discuss it with a customer if you have to. Not running the washing machine or dishwasher or showers or anything like that when you're hooking directly up to their water source. guys another thing you have to think about is your uh, hose length on one of these machines on a four gallon per minute machine I recommend not exceeding 150 feet of hose um, five gallon per minute machine you can go 150 200 feet of hose but if you're getting a four gallon per minute machine I would try to stick to that hundred feet especially if it's portable um, you just don't really need uh, that extra uh, hose it's always a good idea to carry an extra 50 footer with you just in case you need to hook up to it but uh, i just always found when i started out in this business many years ago and i was using portable machines 
Um, 100 foot was ideal as long as you're setting your machine up to where you can get to the end of where you're going to start cleaning. So you've got 100 foot that way. And then you can go 100 foot past the machine before you have to use it. So four gallon per minute, I would try to stick with that 100 foot hose. You're going to get much better draw on your chemical injector. Um, but again, keep a 50 footer just in case you need to add it and uh, you should be fine. So that's on your hose. Also uh, belt drive. This is a belt drive machine. So <clears throat> you're going to get much better draw you're going to be able to uh, pull off of a buffer tank so that you can gravity feed versus direct drive sometimes you cannot just depends on the type of vacuum that certain machine is going to create pulling um, the water um, so i always recommend going with a belt drive they're just better built they're going to last much longer for you um, you're going to run into less problems as far as drawing water and also as far as downstreaming so uh, try to always get a belt drive if you can but if you can't and you can't afford it you can certainly go with the direct drive just may require a little more work um, in certain areas of the setup process the hoses the feeding of it all that kind of thing good guys let's talk about downstreaming when we downstream um, off of a portable machine. It's very, very similar to using a trailer skid or truck mount skid or whatever. Basically, coming off of the unloader, you've got your hose that here is coming from the hose reel. Um, and so all you're doing is uh, interrupting that and you're putting your hose or your downstream injector in line just like this and then the way I always did it was I had two uh, buckets one was my bleach mix the other was plain water so I would apply apply to the house with my bleach mix when it got time to rinse I would simply walk over to the machine take the hose out put it into the fresh bucket of water and do my rinsing that just helped to prevent me from having to shut the machine off take the injector out hook it back up start the machine back up so i just always had a fresh bu bucket of bleach with my little bit of soap in it and then had a fresh uh, bucket with fresh water in it just whip your switch your siphon tube from the bleach to there when you want to rinse um, i'll show you another way that you can do downstreaming in the next video all right, so another way that you can do your trimming off a portable machine, again, just like on a skid or a truck unit, is you could have what's called a bypass, downstream bypass injector. And that's where, just like on this downstream injector that I was using a second ago in the last video, how it was like that. All we've done is taken a downstream injector and put it into this uh, bypass system where we have a loop and a ball valve. And so right now it's set for when the water comes across, it's going to go down and bypass the injector. So that's what you would use for rinsing the house. Um, so you could just keep your bucket, I mean your siphon tube, inside your bleach bucket. Um, you would turn it this way when you want to bleach the house. And so now the water is going to come straight across the downstream injector and pick up your bleach through your siphon tube, send it on down your hose to your gun. And then when you got ready to rinse, you would walk over to the machine, turn your ball valve, and then you'd walk back to your gun and you'd start rinsing. Very simple, easy process. Saves a little time, saves a little bucket. I mean, saves from having another bucket and having to keep it full of water. Um, but the big thing it does too is also when you go to clean a driveway, we'll say a surface cleaner, it returns that little bit, um, barely noticeable, but that, that little bit of pressure loss and flow caused by having this downstream injector in line. It's not a whole lot. It is noticeable um, if you look for it, but uh, this is just a great way to do it too. So um, 
using a bypass injector is the other way that you can do downstreaming. Okay guys, just like on any other type of pressure washer machine, um, we talked about the hose length that you're gonna have. Um, this is the downstream pressure washing gun assembly that we use on all of our equipment, any of our machines. Um, we of course have a ball valve here. We've got our hose swivel so our hose um, swivels and doesn't get you know, all coiled up and we have to sit there and try to fight to straighten it out. That's what this uh, swivel does, is helps the hose management. And so we've got the ball valve and then of course the gun. And then on here, we've got the J-Rod and we've got our two uh, high nozzles and our two low nozzles. This is soap high, soap high, uh, rinse low and rinse high. And so it's pretty much the same basic setup where you just get the right nozzles for the gallon per minute of the machine, whether it's four or five or eight or whatever. And then we still have the ball valve on here. Um, you know, back in the old days when we soft wash uh, with a pressure washer, I started pressure washing back in 1979. Um, downstreaming like i was talking about in uh, a previous video that's really the original soft wash method uh, we would use the green tip and the black tip that comes with the machine and so when i had this uh machine the uh when i did portable machines uh, this was back in florida back in wow uh, like i said 1979 early 80s uh, and we just used really three gallon per minute machines. We didn't have all this big time equipment um, that we have nowadays. But this was the black tip, that's your soaper tip. And so we would basically soap down like a stucco house with this black tip. And then we would go over and switch our siphon tube into a uh, bucket of water and we'd rinse with the same tip. It'd take a little while, but it was very soft. It was very gentle. We didn't call it soft wash back then. Everything then was pressure washing and pretty much is, I mean, that's what your customer is going to recognize you as, is pressure washing. Most customers have never heard of soft washing until you explain it to them. So, uh, but that's basically how we did it. And then we didn't have surface cleaners. So we put on a longer wand and we'd use the green tip and we'd wand the driveway. So that's how we did it. But just wanted to make sure you were aware of how we used to soft wash back in the early days before soft wash became basically um, a marketable or a marketing type term used by uh, a lot of people. And then, uh, of course, it's uh, just kind of describes really an application method. It's not really... Um, I don't, I don't consider a way that we wash, although I guess it could be. But anyway, um, soft washing, pressure washing, whatever. Um, but that's how we used to do it back in the day, just using the black tip. And uh, worked great, still works today, but um, much faster ways and, and better nozzles to rinse faster um, and clean faster. So uh, that's the tips that we use, just like on any other machine. And... Uh, they work great but again if you need the nozzles for your machine and you want it in a j-rod so you don't have to keep you know we always had to the other tip i kept on me was the red tip i know a lot of people say throw them away but we used it quite frequently for uh, rinsing two-story houses and just let the mist kind of do the rinse and we actually back in the day also took a small little drill bit and would drill them out just to get us a little bit more distance. We had no idea back then we were making shooter tips. Um, we were just using them to get two story houses. So, three story. But uh, again, back to the J-Rod, if you need uh, these for your machine, we certainly carry them at the DougRuckerStore.com. Um, but I thought I'd fire it up and show you, you know, spraying with the J-Rod nozzle. Um, also want to show you a good way that you can turn your machine off and restart it without having to um, turn the machine off, let the pressure out of the gun. All right guys, so we'll start off with the uh, J-Rod. So you basically got your two shooter tips. That's the spraying up high.
and this is for fencing up high, and this is supposed to uh, be old nozzle, so you're getting a lot of mist, but uh, the rinse high nozzle will shut your chemical flow off if you decide to use that nozzle, and then the other nozzle you have is the chemical applicator nozzle, which is similar to the black nozzle, and so that's what you would use to apply your bleach mix, and then you've got your rinse nozzle which allows you to put a little pressure on a surface like brick or whatever and do some cleaning and again this one should cut your flow off if you've got the right nozzles for your machine and also if you've got uh, if they've milled them properly so that's the nozzle and then again back in the old days this is the black tip which is the chemical tip so we would actually apply our bleach with it, and we would actually apply it as well. It took a while, but um, nowadays we've got you know higher flow machines, butter nozzles, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes we would with a green nozzle. Okay, one of the things that's kind of a pain when you've got one of these machines, um, portable machines, is you don't have it hooked to a uh, bypass where your bypass or your water goes back to your tank, which allows you to set your gun down like I'm doing here. So what would happen is you have to set your gun down and then you have to walk back to the machine no matter where you're at on the house and it could take a minute you've got to shut the machine off and then you've got to walk back to the gun and you've got to release the pressure and then make your switch to you know a different attachment like a surface cleaner or a different gun if you wanted to um, just whatever the reason is that you needed to shut the machine off um, and then go back and shut it so um, or go back and start it but one of the things that you can do is if you have a ball valve you can actually just open the ball valve up onto uh, open up ball valve up so that water is just flowing through that ball valve and then set it down on the ground of course make sure that the uh, siphon tube is not in your bleach so it's not drawing bleach out but just lay it on the ground walk over to uh, your machine and you can turn your machine off and that water will continue to circulate through the pressure hose through down through that ball valve and then all you have to do when you're ready is just start your machine back up either with the electric start or the pull cord either way and that's just going to be a much easier way uh, to do that and save you quite a bit of time of having you know to walk back and forth to release the pressure after you've turned it off so if you don't have a ball valve get a ball valve and that will help you uh, eliminate trips back and forth to the machine all right, guys, what other tip? One of the things that I always did on my portable machines and still do is I have a hose shut off right there. They're very easy to get from Home Depot or Lowe's. But that just allows me to turn the water off and on at the machine if I need to. Um, and a lot of times I do. Let's say I want to turn that water off and disconnect the hose to fill up my bucket um, or for whatever. Um, I always use one of those. Just makes it a whole lot easier than having to run them back, forth, back and forth to the uh, water spigot. Hey guys, do me a favor if you can. If this video has been helpful for you, uh, be sure to share it out. Hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell so you get notifications whenever I post a video. Um, you'll get a notification to uh, click on and watch it. So. 
uh, share it out, subscribe, hit the bell. And thanks so much for watching. Be sure to leave me a comment or a question. Uh, in fact, I'd love to hear if you're using a portable machine, different ways that you use it. If you've got any tips that you can add and share with our community here, that'd be awesome too. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope this has helped you.